Hi and welcome back to Doc Off Call. I hope you're all doing well. Welcome back to another episode of My Anime Clinic where I break down and react to some popular anime series. Now, I don't know about you guys at home, but I thought we ought to strike a bit of a balance from last week's darker episode of Cells at Work Code Black. So what I've decided to do is this week we were going to look at season two of the original Cells at Work anime. So in today's episode, we're going to be looking at episode two, and we're going to be doing this in two separate parts as the episode itself was separated up into two. So today we're going to tackle acquired immunity. <laughs> okay, so this episode starts with the memory cell and uh, it looks like he's having some sort of premonition of things to come. And uh, it's interesting because the invading cells are arriving in these little space pods that are very reminiscent of when in Dragon Ball Z, Vegeta and Nappa were landing on planet Earth. Uh, it's a really good callback to, to, to the old Dragon Ball Z days. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's cool. It looks like the bug that we're going to be dealing with today is uh, mumps. And of course, mumps is a virus. And it's interesting the way they've, uh, they've drawn it with these two swellings on both sides of the face. Um, because mumps is associated with bilateral parotid gland swelling or parotitis. In fact, it's so well associated with it that if you were to see it as a, as a GP, you'd be thinking this is a spot diagnosis. You'd, ha you'd be thinking this is mumps until proven otherwise. <laughs> oh. Okay, so it seems as though the memory cell was actually having a nightmare rather than a premonition. And that laugh, uh, it reminds me of those, uh, those screaming goats uh, videos I've got on YouTube. And also, I like his library here of uh, books full of information on the different infections that he's come across and encountered up until now. And I think what they're alluding to here with the memory cells library of books is the acquired immune system, or what we otherwise call the adaptive immune system, which is the side of the immune system that we develop from childhood into adulthood after each exposure with new infections. Yeah. <laughs> No, so memory cells are not able to see into the future, but what they do have is something called the anamnestic response, which allows them to produce an enhanced reaction in the immune system to a pathogen that they've come into contact with in the past, um, which allows them to have a more speedy and rapid and efficient response to it the second time round. <laughs> <laughs> I really like how they've animated this, you know. Um, you can really tell that he's going into a world of his own and thinking far too much about this. Um, and it's depicting his personality type of that of someone who's always on the edge. And really, that's what you'd expect from a memory B cell. You'd expect them to be on high alert of seeing another pathogen that they might have contacted in the past so that they can have that enhanced response uh, if they do recognize it. <laughs> and I like how they've depicted the B cell and the memory B cell as like a tag team. It almost reminds me of the old sort of buddy cop uh, movies. Um, and it's true there that the memory B cell can't produce the antibodies themselves and they actually need to resort to the B cell or plasma cells more specifically to produce the antibodies. And I anticipate that we're going to be seeing some more of this a bit later on. 
ただいま自家製にてウイルスの感染を確認しました付近の免疫細胞は直ちに現場へ急行してくださいほら行きましょうよ知ってる抗原だったら抗体でとっとと倒さないと。Okay, so they've detected a pathogen inside the body. The immune system has been activated. They're going to send out the foot soldiers initially, I'm presuming, those being those、uh, members of the innate、uh, immune response, so the macrophage, the neutrophils, and then the backup being that of the acquired immune system, the B cells and the plasma cells, to produce antibodies a bit later on. Hora, I know Mono Kage ni iru yatsu da! <laughs> oh, I'm beginning to love the memory cells reactions here.、Um, and yes, it is,、uh, it is the mumps virus that's、uh, seeming to be the invading pathogen this time. And mumps is a highly contagious virus that we used to see a lot of in. Uh, young children before we rolled out the MMR vaccine. And thank goodness that we did, because on the rare occasion it can cause serious complications like meningitis, or in men it can also cause inflammation of the testicles,、um, which can lower your sperm count. <laughs> <laughs> and、uh, it's funny how the memory cell is just sort of floundering around, getting preoccupied with the second sight of his,、uh, and wasting time not doing his job in forming antibodies to it. And、uh, it's funny because the acquired immune system is known to kick in a bit later on. After the initial response of the innate immune system. And wouldn't it be funny that the reason why it was delayed was because of floundering around like this? And there you go, you know, the neutrophils are always there, ready to sweep in and save the day. They always seem to be in the right place at the right time. And don't forget that both the neutrophils and macrophage make up part of the innate immune response or the first line of defense.、Um, so, you know, it's to be expected that they're going to be there, ready to fight. <laughs> Okay, so this brings up a really interesting point actually.、Um, the mumps virus typically takes anywhere between two to three weeks um, before um, the patient becomes symptomatic, and、uh, we call this period of time the virus's intubation period. So, put simplistically,、um, The intubation period is the length of time it takes for the virus to multiply to the point where it causes symptoms in the body. What I'll do is I'll put a table up on the screen to show you the typical intubation periods for some of the most common viruses that we come across. So, the B cells don't only have to rely upon the memory cells to produce antibodies. They can also do it through using the antigen presenting cells, an example being the macrophage. And what they do is they get a small portion of the virus and present it to the B cell.、Uh, the B cell can then produce antibodies to what's been presented to it. <laughs> yeah, so I like how he's saying that, you know, like, oh, I can't do phagocytosis.、Um, it's almost like, oh, no, that's not part of my job.、Um, and it's not really. I mean,、uh, for those who don't know, phagocytosis is the process by which cells engulf other cells,、um, specifically. Um, when they're engulfing pathogens like viruses or bacteria. And this is normally carried out by the first line defense cells like the macrophage that we spoke about earlier.、Um, but B cells can perform some form of phagocytosis,、um, and that, that occurs when they're normally taking the fragment away from an antigen presenting cell. 
um, when they're producing antibodies. <laughs> oh man, this is memory cell is amazing. Um, and just when you think he's going to be useful, turns out that he's not. <laughs> but this reminds me of, um, you know, I don't know if you guys have ever been in that position where you're trying to remember something and it's right there at the tip of your head, but you just can't get it out. Um, so I can, I can empathize with the memory cell. <laughs> yep, so the macrophage cell has uh, has turned up and she's also one of these first defense cells. She's also an antigen presenting cell and it looks like there she's going to be taking um, some of that sort of viral information through to um, trigger some downstream processes to bring some more cells into the fight, such as the T killer cells that we've seen in previous episodes. Um, and remember, that's part of the innate immune system. Yeah, and I mean, it looks like the immune system is getting pretty overwhelmed in the battle there. So the B cell and the memory cell have gone back to like the back cave or the, the library. And hopefully they'll be able to find some information as to how they can defeat the mumps virus. And just watching this scene, I now remember who memory cell reminds me of. And it's Midoriya from My Hero Academia uh, with all of his books on how to defeat the villains and their strengths and weaknesses. <laughs> so... <laughs> so it seems like that knock on the head has jogged his memory a bit, uh, no pun intended. Um, but I like how this sort of colossal needle comes out of what appears to be the atmosphere, which I'm guessing is like the epidermis and the fat layers of the skin. Um, and I like how this colossal tube, it kind of reminds me of the first time I watched um, Attack on Titan, when the colossal Titan uh, arrives at the first gate. Um, it's pretty clever the way they've sort of linked all this together. Mm. Yeah. Okay, so what this is now showing is that this body has actually, in fact, been vaccinated against mumps. Ah, that makes sense now. So it wasn't a premonition, it was a memory. All right. And, but it's a very cool way to show it. Uh, and the mumps vaccine is actually what we would call a live attenuated vaccine. And what this means is we inject a weakened form of the virus or bacteria into the body um, so that it doesn't cause serious disease and that you can form antibodies to it. And because live attenuated vaccines are the closest thing to a natural infection, they're very good teachers of our immune system on how to prepare should they come into the full-blown infection later on in life. <laughs> Yeah, and although live attenuated vaccines are really effective, um, they're not suitable for everyone, um, specifically those people who have a weakened immune system themselves. Um, they can actually be harmful. Um, however, in those groups of people, we do have alternative forms of vaccines that we can try. And as you can see here, so the memory B cell, he doesn't look like he's aged a day, whereas um, I don't really recognize the white blood cell or the macrophage or the T killer cell. And I guess what they're signifying here in the artwork, if you read into it, is that the B cells actually live a lot longer in the immune system than the innate cells. 
Um, and that's interesting they paid attention to those specific details. And the irony of the memory B cell not remembering something, um, that's just classic. Um, so clearly it wasn't a premonition, it was a memory. <laughs> oh, better late than never. Uh, but I like how they're coming out like badasses with the big guns. Literally, I mean, look at that gun. Um, but yeah, better late than never, and they're here now, so let's see what they do. Yeah, and that's exactly what you'd expect from the acquired immune system, which is otherwise sometimes termed as the more specific side of the immune system or the targeted immune system. And uh, I like the way even that gun has done that sort of targeted, focused sort of uh, system based on killing the mumps virus, which is very clever. <laughs> well, they all look very smug, don't they? And, uh, you know, it is true. Once the body starts to produce antibodies to the virus, the, um, the battle's a full-gone conclusion. Um, because typically, if you look at the graph at which viral load uh, increases um, as the pathogen enters the body, it begins to increase. And then as soon as the antibodies... Um, begin to get produced, it begins to come back down and the battle is won. So, you know, um, without them, we really wouldn't be able to fight viruses and bacteria the way that we do. <laughs> oh gosh, so I take away that buddy cop sort of theme earlier. It looks like it's just good cop, bad cop, but B cell, why would you do that? Why would you do that? You're just gonna get your buddy beaten up. <laughs> oh, memory cell, you had it all written down. You even had a photo. Oh, this memory cell belongs in Code Black. He's like a dysfunctional memory cell. He's lost his own memory. Um, I think they put him in the wrong series. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and that's part one of today's episode. And I have to say, I really miss the upbeat tempo and pacing of the original Cells at Work anime. I'm definitely going to continue watching this series. Now, I'm really actually looking forward to part two, where we're going to be talking about the payers patch. So watch out for that video. Otherwise, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Please do stick around for more. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any future uploads. But otherwise, I'll see you soon in the next one. Thanks.